How should we parent our children? Turns out you'll get a very different answer depending on which part of the world you ask that question. From some cultures encouraging the mother to always have the baby close to her wherever she goes, including sleep time, whereas for others, moving the baby to sleep in their own room by six months is seen as the norm. So how might cultural differences like these impact attachments? Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. Previously, we have considered Ainsworth's strange situation as a method of assessing the quality of attachment between a child and their caregiver. This was where she identified the attachment types of secure, insecure avoidant and insecure resistant. And from this, researchers began to ask how these attachment types might vary around the world. So in this video, we're going to explore cultural variations in attachment. Culture refers to the norms and values that exist within any group of people. So cultural variation is interested in the differences in the norms and values between groups of people. We're interested in how the attachment types differ between cultures. Will there be more secure attachments in the USA than in Japan? Which cultures might have higher insecure avoidant attachment types and why might this be? As we explore cultural variation, it is helpful to bear in mind a distinction that is often made between certain cultures. Individualistic cultures, typically the West, such as the USA and the UK, prioritise the individual independence and autonomy over the group, whereas more collectivist cultures such as China and Japan prioritise the group, family and community over the individual. So how do psychologists conduct research to learn about the variation of attachment across cultures? Well, this brings us to the research of Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg in 1988, who conducted a meta-analysis. And yes, I know it sounds like a character from The Lord of the Rings and a type of beer. Welcome, my lord, to Isengard. Rather than carry out a new study, a meta-analysis takes the data from many other studies that have previously been conducted and combines the results to see the overall effect or trends. In this case, Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg analysed 32 studies from 8 countries, totalling nearly 2,000 participants. All of these 32 studies made use of the strange situation to measure attachment. They analysed all the data to see the pattern of attachment types across the different countries. They wanted to see if there were any intercultural differences, that is differences between cultures, and they also wanted to see if there were any intracultural differences, that is differences within cultures. Before I show you what they found, here's the list of countries that were included. Do you want to predict the results? Feel free to pause the video now and have a think for yourself. Here's what they found. In terms of the differences between cultures, as you can see from the table, secure attachment was the most common in all the cultures studied. Interestingly, Germany had a higher number of insecure avoidant attachments compared to other cultures, with Japan having the lowest number of insecure avoidant children. In fact, countries like Japan, China and Israel had relatively higher insecure resistant rates compared to the other countries. So, why might there be this cultural variation between Germany and Japan, for example? Well, Germany is an individualistic culture, and at the time of the research, highly valued independence in their children. As a result, behaviours that would be identified as insecure avoidant are viewed positively in German children. In fact, one study in Germany by Grossman et al. in 1985 commented that German parents seek independent, non-clingy infants who do not make demands on parents but obey their commands. In contrast, Japan is a collectivist culture and at the time of the research highly value dependence with the norm being for babies to stay very close physically with the mother at all times. Now when they looked at the differences within cultures they found that it was one and a half times greater than the variation between cultures. I'll say that again. When they looked at the differences within cultures, they found that it was one and a half times greater than the variation between cultures. In other words, there were bigger differences within cultures than there were between them. 
For example, variation in the USA ranged from one study showing 46% secure attachment, whereas another study found 90% were securely attached. So what does all this mean? Well, firstly, it suggests that the pattern of attachment found in the USA with Ainsworth's original work also appears to be the pattern across other cultures too. Secure attachment appears to be the norm and suggests that secure attachment might be the best attachment for healthy emotional and social development. This universal finding for secure attachment further points to the notion that attachment might be an innate biological process. Secondly though, the research into cultural variation suggests that there are still differences in the patterns of attachment across cultures as seen with Germany and Japan. And this reflects the differences in their cultural practices and values. Now let's critically consider and think through Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg's research. One of the strengths of the research into the cultural variations in attachment is its standardised methodology. Standardised simply means that things are kept the same. All of the 32 studies included in the meta-analysis made use of the same method to measure attachment, the strange situation. As we saw in the video on the strange situation, this is a highly controlled observation that uses the same eight episodes, each lasting for three minutes, and also uses a clear set of behavioural categories. This standardised methodology means that the researchers can accurately compare attachment behaviours across different cultures without the problem of extraneous variables messing with the way attachment was studied. However, if I put the results up from the meta-analysis again, does anything stand out to you as a potential problem? Take a look at the number of studies conducted in each country. For some countries, that's a very low number of studies. Here's the problem. How representative are those samples of the cultures of those countries? For example, Japan is a very large country with many subcultures. A study by Eisendorn and Sagi in 2001 found differences in attachment types between the city of Tokyo and more rural parts of Japan. Tokyo demonstrated attachment type patterns similar to studies in Western countries, whereas studies in more rural parts of Japan reported much higher insecure resistant children. Therefore, this suggests you cannot make comparisons between countries like Japan and the USA if you do not know the specific culture of the sample being studied. The samples in the two studies from Japan, for example, may not be very representative of Japan as a whole. In fact, to their credit, Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg state that, quote, great caution should be exercised in assuming that an individual sample is representative of a particular culture or even subculture. One of the biggest criticisms of the research into cultural variations into attachment is that it's ethnocentric. This is where one particular culture is used as the standard by which other cultures are judged. In this case, the strain situation was the method used to assess the quality of attachment, but this was designed in America, a westernised individualistic culture, using entirely American children. This means that when researchers observe the behaviour of the children, they are using a set of behavioural categories that were created through the lens and perspective of an American set of values. So if a child enjoyed exploring the playroom lots, this would indicate avoidant behaviour and be seen negatively. But in Germany, for example, this will be viewed positively because of the value they place on independence. This has led some to argue that as a result, the strain situation may be biased towards the American westernized culture. To consider this a little further, there is research in Japan by Tagahashi in 1990. The strain situation works on the assumption that attachment is related to anxiety when separated, but look what happened in this study. The episode of the strain situation where the mother leaves so that the baby is left on their own was so unnatural and unusual that they had to stop the study for 90% of the children because of how extreme their anxiety became. This study strongly suggests that the high levels of insecure resistance seen in Japan may be due to the fact that in Japanese culture, separation from the mother is so rare. To conclude then, 
Using the strain situation outside of Western cultures means it's hard to know what it is measuring and suggests that more culturally relative measurements of attachment are needed instead. Now next in the topic of attachment, we're going to explore the dark side and consider what can go wrong when sadly a child fails to form an attachment. To watch that, the video is on the screen now and in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.